Everyone, so we got ourselves another nice plate of figs today. Pretty much every day I've been getting a plate of figs like this. And today's winner is the Violette de Bordeaux. And I wanna to talk to you guys about it. This is, without a doubt, one of the best fig varieties that exists. There's many names for it um, that people have named and found throughout Italy, throughout France. Um, it's believed to originate in France. But there was one that was found called Nero 600M. I wanna show you guys that tree right now. Nero 600M that was found in Italy 600 meters up a mountain above sea level. And uh, I don't know if it was planted or not, but you can see it back in there. Very tall, vigorous grower with, because it's so vigorous right now, it's got really long fingers to it. Uh, but that is also a Vila de Bordeaux type. And if I bring you guys over and show you guys some of my other trees that are in pots, they're, they're less vigorous and the leaf pattern changes. And believe it or not, Vila de Bordeaux is one of those figs with three different distinct leaf patterns. And here's another one right here. This is uh, called Petit Albique. Beautiful, beautiful leaves, beautiful fig. I mean, everything about this tree, in my opinion, is beautiful. Um, it's also extremely productive. This is probably the most productive fig I have this year. Um, it's pretty close. It was a nice close tie between this one and LSU Scott's Black because LSU Scott's Black put out so many Brabas. Um, another big productive fig for me is the Neruciolo de Elba, which is now done. And uh, you can see there's more figs forming up here and higher up on my in-ground tree. We had about 10 Brabas that formed and a boatload of main crop. And I'm actually gonna get a second main crop, I think off of that tree, not too far away, uh, maybe in about a couple weeks. So the point is though, is that this is just, it's up there and some of the highest productivity that I have. And it's like that every year. You can see this tree in particular is quite old. Um, I've had this now, I think for four or even five years, if I'm not mistaken. This is one of my oldest trees that I've kept for a long time um, and it just goes to show just how good this variety is it's withstood the many coals that I've done over the years and the many varieties that I've gone through here's another Violette de Bordeaux that last year we decided to to find another Violette de Bordeaux type to see if we could find one that was maybe slightly better this is a variety here called Valle Calda and you can see that I've grafted it right in here under this rootstock all in an effort to have more Violette de Bordeaux varieties. Like I said, Nero 600M is also one. Valet Calda is another, the Petit Albique, Petit Negri. Um, there's so many of them. There's probably around 10 of them that are named. I have another one over yonder that is uh, one called Unknown Negretta or Piccola Negretta. Uh, these are just wonderful, wonderful varieties. So it's, it's a fig that to me is such a standard classic fig. A wonderful producer in every sense of you can think of. I mean, it, it has great rain resistance. It has reasonable hardiness. It's a mid-season producer. If you keep it in a pot, it puts out a nice Brava crop. This tree put out, I think, three Bravas and it's very young. I mean, this tree is only now, this is a, its second season from graft. Um, so it really was loaded up and down all the branches. Every node that there was a leaf, there was also a fig. Um, and that's just what this variety does. It's just, it's incredible, it's the standard. It's the one that you compare to all other varieties. I would say, at least in the mid-season category, the figs that are in the mid-season category, this is the one that I compare them all um, to. And I had a friend a longtime fig grower had, I met him when I was just starting out in growing figs and I was a bit star, uh, starstruck because uh, he's been doing this for so long and I got the chance to meet him and he lives in the area in Jersey and he's got, at the time, I think he had gone through, through at least 200 varieties, just an incredible amount. So anything that guy says, you have to really listen to him and I asked him, some questions and one of the questions was uh, 
What is your favorite fig out of all the 200 varieties that you have, all the varieties that he found? Um, what is the favorite? What is your favorite? He said Villette de Bordeaux. And I thought he was kidding. I, I laughed. I, I started giggling, chuckling because uh, how could it be Villette de Bordeaux? It's such a common fig. It doesn't go for a high price. People aren't really talking about it all that much, uh, but it is. It's incredibly good. And I later found out that he wasn't kidding, um, that he was being truthful. And it wasn't really until I got to really taste this and grow it for many years that I got a full understanding of what it is exactly that he meant. And um, I just think this is one of those figs, guys, that you ought to have if you're going to be a collector, if you're going to be just doing this because you want to grow figs, if you're going to be doing this because you're a hobbyist, even some commercial growers, I think, ought to check this fig out. Um, it's just wonderful. It really is. So I'm going to open up some of these here, uh, a couple of these. By the way, I've had some of these that I, I kind of was hung up on for a while. Some of them actually have leaked honey from the eye. They produce their own nectar. Uh, in the interior and I thought that that wasn't the case with this variety that this variety didn't do that ever but it does um, I think this one actually is a bit spoiled we'll see I think we're gonna taste it anyway and uh, I've been having a bit a bit of some issues with fruit flies and different things SWD here so that could be why some of these are now just suddenly ripe. It seemed very abrupt that a lot of these had ripened at once, but they do have this habit of ripening a lot of the figs at one time. It really ripens, I would say, hmm, maybe like, um, you know, three to four figs at one time. It's weird like that. Some figs maybe do one or two at one time and they'll focus all their energy on that. Um, kind of like my black Madeira behind me or in front of me over here behind you guys. Right now I'm just cutting all these open to see what we got here, what the inside looks like. Quite beautiful, but I think some of these are definitely just a bit spoiled in different areas. We'll have to, we'll have to see. They all look strikingly very similar which is a bit weird because uh i've seen the inside of these vary quite a bit but that's not the case today i don't know there's not much else i can really tell you guys is that this is just a fig that you have to grow it's really it just comes down to that and here i have a whole plate of these things let me show you guys what this looks like. Absolutely beautiful. Ain't that a picturesque plate of figs right there, guys. And it really does go to show, like, look how much honey is in there. Very juicy, looks like. And the exterior is just pure black. Gorgeous looking fig. So it really is just a shame that this one's not talked about. And in fact, when I was at the Staten Island Fig Festival this year, I brought some of these Violette de Bordeaux and someone, I said, I gave them this fig to, I think it was Vic, if I'm not mistaken. And he loved it. And I, and I said, Get what, guess what fig that was? And he actually picked it out. He got it right. But uh, he couldn't believe that this was Violette de Bordeaux. So... Let's try one of these bad boys. Wow. <laughs> that is interesting. Holy hell. What a change, man. I mean, every year these things change. Fig to fig, even different parts of the year, you know, versus two weeks ago when they were ripening. Um, versus now. That's wild. 
So that Bordeaux berry is really coming in there. And the inside's kind of congealed actually into to a gel. And I can see actually there is some SWD damage in here. That's a shame. I see one squirming around. I'm gonna take off the bottom, not eat that. Eat the rest of this. It's just really good, guys. It's a standard fig. It should be in everybody's collection for you know a long time. This is this fig isn't going anywhere anytime soon. There's a reason why this fig is so common, you know. It's just really good, and it's pr it's pretty close, if not a four out of five for me. I would put this fig in my top. Out of all the figs I grow, in terms of if you put if you gave them all a number and said, rank them in order of how well they do here. Um, this is in the top five, I think. Yeah, it's in the top five. So. In terms of just how reliable, how good it is year after year, how productive it is, you know, how good it tastes. If you combine all that together, um, this is a top five fig for sure. So anyway, guys, I don't want to harp on it too much, but uh, I think you guys get the point. We'll catch you all soon. If you guys have been enjoying these tasting videos, we have a playlist that I created that. Um, has all the other different varieties that we've tasted this year and reviewed this year. And we're adding it to that playlist. You guys can go back and find them very easily that way. And you can also go and go through and see which ones you like. Um, we'll do a, an end, uh, end of the year review on some of these varieties, which ones I really liked. Um, certainly on our figs, certainly on the blog. So check out the blog, fig, figboss.com. And also share this video if you guys know somebody who likes figs or interested in, who is interested in growing figs. Share this video with them. I think they'd really be interested to see. And uh, yeah, guys, we'll catch you soon. We'll talk to you all soon. Take care, everyone.